Okay, so our next speakers are uh, from Monash College. Um, we have Kalari and we have Sharon. Um, they're gonna, again going to speak for 15 minutes, then somehow through wonders of technology, we're going to be uh, asking them questions. So please use, use me too, uh, to, to post any questions. But obviously, there'll be opportunities at the end as well. Uh, so hopefully, uh, Kalari and Sharon, if you'd like to begin, um, everyone can see you and, uh, and can hear you, hopefully. Hi. Um, I hope you can hear me. We can hear you. Good, great. So I'm Kulari, uh, Director E-Learning, and with me here today is Sharon, who is our Senior Learning Content Designer uh, from Monash College uh, back in Melbourne, Australia. So uh, what I'm going to do is give a brief introduction to our project, and Sharon will walk you through the data that we have collected and the findings based on that. So let's go to, the, um, to give you a brief uh, overview. Um, so Sharon will uh, control our slides, so let's move on, Sharon. So um, uh, our journey so far is the college is fully owned by Monash University and uh, we have a strategy, a technology enhanced learning strategy and part of that um, we started using Echo360 with uh, additional features of the actual learning platform. Um, to support this we got e-learning spaces which I will show you some of the uh, photos of the learning and future plans. Uh, so uh, in this process, we have a very um, comprehensive uh, environment where we link the strategy with our uh, teaching and learning pedagogies that is uh, supported through uh, learning design process. Probably we all are very familiar with Jilly Salmon's Carpentium process, so we use that uh, learning design approach uh, with the uh, uh, five-stage model that Jimmy researched and uh, produced a lot of research on that. So uh, while she was here back in Australia, that's something that um, we um, embraced and that has worked uh, very well for us. So as part of our strategy, um, we have the governance, uh, which supports how we play all these uh, tools including Eco 360. So to make the students and staff lives really, really easy, it's through a single sign-on. They only know that they get into their um, virtual learning environment and then they have all the tools in there. So uh, to get into this one, um, what, uh, like I said, we use, we pick a unit or a subject and we designed using the learning design process that is the Carpathian. So it's a collaborative approach to building. And while building, what we do is we bring the technology, required technology. So um, in 2016, <coughs> when we introduced Eco 360, this was one of the first units that we designed and integrated uh, Eco 360 how to use it, what would the benefit be, why would um, that be part of um, our strategy. So to give you who our learners are, um, most of our learners are uh, international students, um, they are, they, English is not their first language, and they're from a very diverse, uh, culturally diverse, as well as um, learning styles, very different, they are used to a different style of learning. So to increase um, the engagement, the performance, all those things we use in Core360 as a vehicle to get to the end point. So 
um, changing the end all of this, we've got a new learning space, and I'll show you in the next slide um, what the environment looks like. So this is a classroom where we have multiple display space and a lectern where we can lecture and control everything, but very um, deliberately flat for learning. So this is where we um, started using our uh, Echo 360 environment and uh, based on that we have done a few uh, iterations of this with multiple subjects, business subjects, engineering subjects, high end mathematics subjects and um, what we have found is a quite a nice um, a set of data which Sharon is Thank you for this data. Thank you, Larry. Um, so for those of you who aren't too familiar, I'll just quickly give you an overview of uh, Echo 360 platform. It's a cloud-based learning and teaching platform which integrates content management, student engagement, lecture capture, and engagement analytics. As Clary mentioned, um, as with most of our tools, the integrated into our LMS, so this provides our students um, with simple sign-on, security, um, and accessibility. Uh, so our lecturers and our students engage in the platform via their devices, and uh, they can interact through uh, interactive polling tasks, uh, which are a variety of question types, multi-choice, true or false, uh, there's a note taking function where students can take notes that are synced through the lecture recordings. Um, there's also a bookmarking function which allows students to actually bookmark certain points in the lecture where uh, an important piece of information might have been, um, might have been given. Uh, they're able to flag the confusion with the lecturer by the press of a button, and that's a very visual indicator for our lecturers. Um, and they are able to either address the confusion at the time or um, later on. There's also a question and answer feature within the platform that allows students to ask the lecturer questions. Um, and for our students, uh, this is a really useful tool because it removes the face threatening um, element of asking a question in a large group in a second language. So those are some of the features. That's a brief overview of, of um, Echo 360. Three student experience surveys for the period of time that we've been using the NLP, um, Active Learning Platform, for instance. Um, these have been done through an anonymous school form. They are um, voluntary for the students to, to take part in. Our recent survey was done in July this year, and we had 228 respondents from um, three different deployed units um, and different subject areas. So we asked our students how easy they found using the 360 and as you can see from the results here, it's quite overwhelming that they do find it very easy to use. Um, the majority of students say it's fairly easy, but a small number say they find it difficult. We asked students about their perception of using the 360 during lectures and what they perceived to be the benefits. And this is um, an overwhelming response that the majority of students believe that the note taking function is the most useful uh, feature of the, of the platform. And actually, in previous surveys, um, students have said to us or reported that they've taken more notes using the platform um, than without it. So, how are students are using the platform outside their lectures? Um, it's being used uh, for either watching recordings to catch up on the lectures or to review. Um, a small number of students, of course, are still using it to focus on the lecturer and with their classmates. Now, the next slide is, is really interesting. We wanted to find out whether our students believe that the platform supported their language learning and their language use. And you can see that there's been an overwhelming response that they do believe that it does. 
um, uh, later comment from the student was that it helped practice their listening. They were able to practice their listening by listening back to uh, lecture recordings. So what the, what the fact actually allows them to do is to practice the use of, of English for reading, for listening, and for writing. And this is certainly an area I think that is worth much more investigation. But that's, um, that's really wonderful. Uh, a couple of comments now from upstairs, what they like the least about using the platform. And it, it things like staring at a computer screen for a long time. Um, and to do the functionality of not being able to use the lecture slides or um, notes on the lecture slides, um, that it's reliant on internet access, that they're unable to watch it in live streaming. Um, so not really with the fact that the tool is, is, um, is, is sort of difficult to use or not useful for their, for their learning. Um, what the students like the most, obviously, is being able to review their content whenever they want and as many times as they want. They're able to have a fear of being on the same page as their lecturer. Um, I think they have a better experience of, of the review process. Um, and they enjoy the interactive quizzes in the class and they find it simple and convenient. So, one thing that we came away with is that our students love, they will enjoy using the platform now, they want to keep using the platform for their learning, and they actually want to make um, the Echo 360, they want it available for, for their other units. So, that's a really positive, some positive feedback. Students. Um, I'll hand it to Larry. You want to just wrap up mm -hmm. the presentation? Yeah. So, um, one of the bigger components of our strategy is to enhance student uh, learning experience, engage the student learning, as well as uh, get better results. So, um, as part of getting better results or getting jobs, because um, uh, some of our students are people uh, who have had master's level education and just trying to get a job and going through uh, employability skills development program. So, language skills like Charles said is really important for us, uh, and that's one of the key um, areas that. Uh, we need your courses on. So being able to use Echo 360 for their language development is one of the important things. Um, as well as some of the units that uh, initially started using this system, uh, for example, our counting system, uh, accounting subject, uh, the increased pass rate as well as increase of the average student mark uh, was really high. So the first time, the pass rate increased by 20%, and the uh, uh, average mark increased uh, a lot. So we have seen over uh, now nearly two years, the uh, improvements that this tool in engaging our students through a tool like this has brought to the subjects as well as to the students. Um, and also, um, we have more and more staff and students requesting because we didn't, we didn't, it, we didn't make it available for all the subjects in one go. Um, we only have a small number of venues that can record, but we have enabled people who asked for uh, for the web application. So it's great to see the enthusiasm coming from staff and students rather than it's a top-down drive, so which is uh, really for us. Um, so it's great to be able to share these findings with you as well as to um, get support from Echo 360 back here in Australia. We are very well supported by uh, Echo. Uh, we have user groups and conferences as well as uh, different updates and things like that. So we are very kind of uh, uh, thankful for making the environment so friendly and supporting us. I think that's about it from us, uh, and we would like to.
get some questions from. Um, Sharon and Kalari, any questions? We've got some on the, uh, the board, on me too. Any questions from the floor before we go to these? Okay, well, I'll start with one from the board that came up first. Um, so, between the two of you, um, are there any challenges uh, with the bandwidth and availability from the perspective of the local user, presumably in the actual classrooms themselves? That's for Kalari and Sharon. Yes, are there any challenges with the bandwidth and availability uh, from the perspective of the local user, the student? I'm sure that's an interesting question because um, the slide which I don't think you can go to the uh, Thank you very much indeed. Uh, another question is around um, how did you arrive at a decision that Moodle was not sufficient for your needs? How did we arrive at the decision? Moodle was not sufficient for your needs. Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to as a content um, management system as well as some of the other interactive tools. But it's this model is not giving everything. Like say, said, um, what we have now is 10 core uh, learning tools integrated to Moodle. So the, the core includes Turnitin as a vegetation protection and online marking tool, uh, Echo 360 as our active learning uh, platform, uh, we have Kaltura as our video management system, we have, I don't know whether you have heard something called Caruso, um, we have uh, Mahara as a uh, portfolio. So there are lots of tools. We have an adaptive learning system, Smart Sparrow. There are a lot of tools that we have integrated. Ten are core, and those core are also for uh, uh, Moodle. So the identification is Moodle does one thing. It uh, captures data, it does certain things, but it is not solving all the pedagogical requirements that our staff and students need to address to. So, uh, we did a review in 2015 that really clearly showed where we were at and where we needed to be, and that um, got started us on getting on the Okay, well, thank you very much indeed, Kalari and Sharon. So we'll turn you around so you can, maybe you can see the audience. Um, can we just uh, show our appreciation and give a round of applause? Thank you.